Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of my Interior OS review. Today I will be installing the Google Play Store and testing out how the apps available on it run. Now I'm going to show you how to install the Google Play Store. First, on your computer, go to opengaps.org, then select ARM, Android 7.1, and the Pico variant, then hit download. Next, drag that file over to a USB drive, eject it, then plug it into your Raspberry Pi. When the notification shows up, click on it. Then copy your file over to the downloads folder. Next, reboot it into recovery mode. Then hit install and select your file. Select this for the options, then swipe to start the installation. Mine took about a minute and 30 seconds. Then go back to the home screen and deselect this. Finally, reboot your device. When it finishes rebooting, the Google Play Store should be installed. It will probably be very laggy at first, but after a little while it will be usable and you can download any app. Now I'm going to try out various apps and see how they perform. The first app that I'll try out is YouTube. YouTube ran perfectly smooth and I didn't notice any lag whatsoever. I plugged some headphones into the headphone jack and the sound worked very well. The only problem I had with the sound was that there wasn't an easy way to control the volume. If you wanted to change it, you had to either go into the settings and change it, or connect a pair of Bluetooth headphones that had a volume controller in them. But that's why you might like the app NewPipe better. NewPipe is a lot like the YouTube app, except it has a bunch of features and gesture controls that the YouTube app doesn't have. Also, you can download it through F-Droid, so you don't need the Play Store to get it. With NewPipe, you can adjust the volume as well as the brightness while you're watching a video. You can also download the video or make it so that the sound continues to play even if you leave the app. The next app I tried was Spotify. I noticed a lot of lag the first time I opened it, but every time after that it ran very smoothly with only occasional lag spikes. I then tried out some social media apps and they ran perfectly smooth. Next, I tested out a few games. Fruit Ninja had a small amount of lag when opened, but when I got into the game itself, there was no noticeable lag. Jetpack Joyride was super laggy for the first 30 seconds or so, but after that it ran just fine. Next I tried out Asphalt 8. First I changed a few of the settings, then I tried playing it. I do need to give you a little warning though, my skills have been known to be extremely intimidating. Surprisingly this game ran super smoothly and there wasn't any lag at all. And then, about a minute into the race, it froze. I tried out Asphalt a couple more times, and sometimes I was able to get through an entire race, but mostly it ended up freezing. So games do work on Amteria, but you probably won't be able to play higher end games without lag. The simple lower end games work super well though. For all the games, I noticed that they ran the smoothest when the Wi-Fi was turned off. But even then, some games still wouldn't run well enough to be played. So, while there are a lot of apps that do work super well with Materia, there are also many that don't work so well. However, the developers of Materia are constantly updating it, so eventually many of these apps may run perfectly. At this point, Materia definitely isn't meant for gaming, but even so, there are plenty of games that work very well with it. But also, Materia can be very useful for streaming music, watching YouTube videos, or using various social media apps. If you haven't already seen it, be sure to check out part 1 of my review where I install Mteria onto my Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching everyone, peace out. 